friends, in our last tutorial, we rendered this adorable little succulent in alcohol marker and colored leads. Today, we're going to work on drawing a person with the same colored leads. We are using pink and purple um, in color Eno, and I am using the 0.7 mark up. Uh, 0.7 mechanical pencils. You can get these on Amazon. I am using, I'm actually running out on both of them, so I will grab my refills and that way I can show you guys what the refills look like. I have used other colored LEDs in the past, but these are the best for the technique we're gonna go over today. And if you're interested on more tutorials on using colored LEDs, I have them here on the channel. So here's pink and here's purple. When you order refills, they come in these plastic protective sleeves. You can get an eight pack of the refills or you can get an eight pack of the mechanical pencils on Amazon. Just check my description below for a link. So I might as well demonstrate these before we do the tutorial. I have one purple lead left and one broken lead inside my purple. So that's one of the problems with these color Eno leads and color Eno mechanical pencils is that the lens leads have a tendency to break. They are a bit soft, softer than graphite for most of us. And when it breaks off to be about this long, I don't know if y'all can see that, it is the, the pencil, the clutch mechanism in the pencil can no longer grab it. So there is a fair bit of waste with these mechanical pencils, unfortunately. But I've tried these leads in other pencils and other pencils are just about as bad, so. Alrighty, and since you guys know I like drawing adorable things, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to start out, I think I'm gonna do a bust and I'm just gonna bore you guys to death and draw Kara because why not? Also because uh, this is like my fourth video for today that I've recorded. It is a Sunday, so I'm trying to get some video action in while I'm feeling it. And this is like my fourth one. I literally just finished that succulent video. And I thought you guys are gonna wanna see how this works with people. So with humans, you can use the blues and you can use the greens. Uh, they do tend to work better for softer colors, I mean for, dang, for shadow colors. See, tired. But for human skin tones, red, pink, and purple are good choices with red and purple being good for darker skin tones. Or you can use whatever color you want, including pink and totally make it work. I believe in you. I'm also drawing Kara because I want you to go read my comic, Seven Inch Kara. Uh, I recommend you read it on Tumblr. That way you can just follow it and add it to your dash and it shows up every, every Friday around noon central time. Or you can read it on the website at sevenincharacom And the Tumblr would be sevenincharacom yeah, seven And you guys can check Oh, sorry, running out of lead on this one too. You guys can check the description below for both of those links. So I'm doing the majority of my light sketching using the pink. One of the nice things about the color Eno leads is that they are very erasable. So if you happen to misdraw, make a mistake, or if you want to get rid of some of your profuse amount of lines, these leads make it pretty easy to do so. And I was lazy and I didn't draw or even think up any sort of a background. So I'm going to grab light blue and orange and I'm just gonna do some cute daisies. And you guys will just have to forgive me. So the petals of the daisy are gonna be white and the interior is gonna be yellow. So that's why I use a very light blue to sketch out the exterior of my daisies. And now I'm just doodling in some petals. Not the best daisies I've ever drawn, but that's okay. Did you guys know that if you join my Patreon, there's actually a tier where you get to decide what medium I use and what I draw with it. And I'll send you the finished original. It's sort of like a commission tier. Um, the idea is more, you know, you wanna learn how to paint dogs in watercolor. So you're gonna commission that tier 
And heck, you could even send me a picture of your dog. So that way you're getting all sorts of bonuses. You're supporting art education content. You're learning how to paint dogs in watercolor. You're learning how to paint your dog in watercolor. And you get the finished painting of your dog in watercolor. So you've gained so much from that transaction. And you can find out more about all the arty goodies that I offer on my Patreon at patreon.com slash soup. And your support really goes a long way to helping me out, especially since YouTube has drastically changed its monetization processes. So as individual creators, especially someone who isn't doing something hyper popular, I don't actually make a whole lot of money on ads anymore. Not that I ever really made a whole lot of money, but I'm making even less now. So if you enjoy my content and you'd like to see me continue, there's a few ways you can help out. One of them is word of mouth. If you encourage me and if you tell people you enjoy my work, I'm much more likely to do it. But also you can throw some money at me. I mean, I am a human being with human needs and uh, money's a pretty good encouragement too. So I'm just going to actually fill the background with cute daisies because that seems to be my M.O. I'm being pretty lazy with these daisies as well. Um, it's not that I don't care. It's just that um, for you guys to get the point, it doesn't actually have to be fancy or overly finished. So... When I do these sort of colored lead pieces, and I'll zoom in, I like to start with the lighter color and then add accents or um, emphasize things with the darker color, just because the lighter color, they're, they're all easy to erase, to be honest, but the lighter color is a little easier to erase. So it just makes things a bit simpler. And you can get really fancy and use as many colors all eight colors, really. That's how many colors are available in color, you know. You can use all eight colors if you want, which could be great if you're doing an elaborate piece. Or you can use just a couple colors and let them sort of influence your color palette. And the nice thing about the colorinos, and we covered this in my past two videos where I do tutorials on these, is you do not have to ink this. You can, I guess, but you don't have to. You can just mark her right on top of it. So we're gonna switch over now to the purple. Oh, wait. Chin is looking really big. I could erase, but I'm also kind of lazy. Uh, and we're going to start emphasizing areas that would be in shadow. So we're gonna do the sketch line art in purple. And if it's not making sense right now, it will make sense in a minute. So I'm actually not going to do all of the hair in purple. I'm mostly doing that which would be in shadow or would be darker. I'm also going to do her eyelashes since I usually render those in black anyway bottom of her eyes. Crease there in her lips. Her nostril. A little bit of the underside of her nose. Not too much. Underside of her lip. So I think it's probably starting to make sense a little bit. So the areas that the light hits I'm leaving those pink or I'm leaving them kind of only touched a little bit with the purple. Because the point of the purple isn't to tighten up the pink. The point of the purple is to add some darker color, some shadow. You can also use red. Um, I just find that for Caucasian skin tones, purple tends to be sort of the complement to sort of peachy, orangey skin tones that a lot of us go with. Go ahead and use it for the underside of her chin. All right, so that is the basics for the sketch. And I am actually not going to erase any of those construction lines. I'm gonna leave everything where it is and I'm gonna go select some colors. All right, so I've gone ahead, I've selected my colors, I've swatched my colors. I'm going to begin with adding some shadow to the eyes. As you guys can see, there is 
some movement. And I'll sh zoom in and show you guys on this one. There is some movement of the leads and the color of the leads when you add alcohol or even water-based markers, because um, I did this with the Karataki markers as well. So that is something to be aware of. I think of it as a positive thing because it influences the color, which is why we use pink where we used it and white where we used it. So I'm going to go ahead and start coloring in the skin tone. And I do, it is picking up a little bit of the purple um, and so if that's a problem, you can always keep a piece of scratch paper handy and clean off your marker. But this should really only be an issue on this first layer. It might really be an issue on this first layer. The first time I did this, I didn't use purple. I used pink and red and I didn't have as much of a problem, but we'll find out. See, the pink doesn't really seem to be influencing this light color a whole much, but I also don't like how the purple's picking up and spreading everywhere. Hopefully this will only be an issue for this first layer and then all subsequent layers will sort of be sealed in. All right, so that's that base color down. Go ahead and start applying another color. And yeah, it seems that only that first initial layer was a problem for color smearing. So maybe in the future, I won't use purple with light skin tones like this one. It's pretty noticeable or maybe I can salvage it. It's always the excitement of making a mess is sometimes you can make your mess look really good. But that sort of scrubby where it picks up a bit of purple and doesn't consistently move the purple is kind of a problem. Not a problem, not a thing I'm a fan of. And I'm going to try for that third layer. I think it works really well with the pink, just with such a light skin tone as Kara has, not so well with the purple. So in the future, I think I will avoid doing purple on skin. But while it's noticeable, a little distracting, it's not too terrible. And I do believe we can salvage it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in some of the blush colors. And I'm gonna start with Blue Studio in Shell. And I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit because when I'm zoomed in like that, I always tend to end up off camera. And Shell is a really great light pink, sort of a base color for um, starting blush or hinting at blush. And hopefully I won't continue to get this weird, well, we know why we're getting this purple, this <laughs> purple accident. And I like to apply blush where skin overlaps skin. And I'll give that a second to dry before I start adding a little more to the cheeks above the eyes, over here. And then I'll switch over to E93. And see with the pink, it's really cute. With the purple, mm, I'll do it differently next time. And I've, as I've mentioned in some of my alcohol, other alcohol marker tutorials, you can usually get about three layers of tone before you need to move on over to your next color. So I'm gonna give those a chance to soak in and then we're gonna move on to E51. All right, so that's had a little bit of a chance to soak in. I'm going to go in and start darkening up some of the skin 
with E51 Milky White. I tend to use, um, unless I am doing sort of a specific color palette when I'm doing Kara stuff, I do tend to use the same markers. Um, while that is a little bit boring, I will admit, uh, it does help for these sort of tutorials because I can grab what I need really quickly and I don't have to spend too, too much time color picking. But it's another reason why if uh, people wanted to commission a tutorial, I would be very eager to take them up on it because it would take thinking up a subject matter away. I could just focus on doing a great job. So I think you guys can already see the potential for this lineless sort of style. While the purple is marring it a little bit, I will admit, I'm going to try and fix that in a moment with BV, no, I'm sorry, BV31. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna go in with BV31. All right, that's had a chance to soak in. So I'm just gonna start adding this sort of shadow color and hopefully, hopefully it'll make the purple, which is straight a bit, look a little more intentional. Like we talked about in the succulent video, uh, you can salvage a mistake by making it look like you did it on purpose. So let's try and get that purple mistake looking intentional. And I think if I were using something darker than these skin tones, the purple wouldn't be as noticeable or as bad. Now, as I said in the succulent video, if you are using sort of this lineless or faux lineless technique. You do need to be a little bit cleaner in how you handle things. So if you're like me and you're a little bit messy with how you do um, your application, you're gonna need to work on that because it's gonna be much more noticeable without the line art to help sort of keep things in place. And here's just a touch of RO2, I like to build my blushes up kind of gradually. And I'm also going to use E21. Which desperately needs refilling. And then finally, a little bit of E34. And I'll start with applying the freckles. So I do Kara's freckles across the bridge of her nose and on her neck and shoulders. And I usually do them in a couple of layers. So that's layer one. And I will go ahead and set these aside for later. So next I'm switching over to her hair and I'm going to start with E97. And hopefully, we have a lot of purple in her hair, so hopefully it will not be as noticeable when the smearing starts. Unlike in the succulent tutorial, I am going to actually do an almost all over layer. I think I'm just going to leave the whites of this first layer of brown. So I'm going to do less spot color. And I need to work around the flower. Fortunately, I think it's the only one that actually crosses over. And I, let me zoom out actually, since we finished with the face, um, you got, don't need to see every single little action, I don't think. I mean, if you do, then let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to be zoomed in for more of the image. But I think you guys get the gist. Purple's actually working quite a bit better here. And in case I didn't mention it, we are coloring on Strathmore Smooth Bristol. My favorite choice for alcohol marker rendering is actually Strathmore 
plate Bristol, but I don't have any in the visual art journals and I'm trying to use what I have. So until I run out of this smooth, I'm gonna be using the smooth. The smooth is almost as nice as the plate though. The plate does have a little bit of a finish to it. So um, it's like a clay finish. I'm going to go ahead and use that same color for my next layer. And as I say in most of my color rendering videos, your goal for building up contrast is to cover color less than you did in the layer before. So we're not trying to get exactly where our brush marks were. We're just trying to get kind of close, we're trying to build up those shinies. I'm gonna go ahead and slide on over to E08. Let me adjust the camera there. No, I've been kind of off of the frame. I'm sorry about that. Let's do the eyes a little differently than we normally do since we're not relying on line art to help us out. Gotta do some of that lifting ourselves. And if I were you, I would cut this out from the book. I'm trying to keep all of my, or most of my water color slash marker, whatever media I'm working on in its respective books. Cause it does make it easier when I'm doing sort of like sketchbook walks with you guys. But if you're not using it for that purpose, I find spiral binding tends to get in the way of my ability to render. So I would just cut it out if I were you. So you guys can see the purple doesn't nearly affect the hair as much as it did the skin. So I think for darker skin tones, that should be perfectly fine. All right. So I gave that a chance to dry. That way I can hopefully get one more layer out of it. Though I'm not sure that that layer will even be noticeable. So I'm actually going to just go ahead and switch to E47. And do a little blending, I think. There we go. I'm also going to do some of her freckles a little darker. So I'm going to use this. Not everyone's freckles um, tend to be two-tone, but mine are. Because sometimes they fade and then I get new ones. So I do that for Kara. You now work with what you know. And you have to be much cleaner about getting near the edges of things or people. So, you gotta work with a steadier hand. Think of it a bit like inking. Because, I mean, that's kind of what you're doing. Alcohol markers are filled with alcohol inks. And feel free to make stupid noises or silly noises if they help you. What's nice about plate and smooth Bristol is they have enough of a finish that your markers aren't going to bleed everywhere. Although they will blend, but you can, um, if you let them dry, they're not gonna bleed out everywhere basically. And um, so you can get really close to things like, like the skin here and basically cover that purple line if you want without it like spider blending everywhere, ruining what you just did. I'm actually going to go back now with that dark brown because I don't, I don't like how that transition looks. So I'm just gonna fix that. 
fix it a bit, at least. Try to make it less stark. But those of you who are used to my videos know there is a lot of sort of noodling and tweaking and, and finding things. So if it takes you longer to find what you're looking for, be it a line or an art style, don't fret. It takes some of us a very long time to get to that point. So people are still looking. All right, so we're gonna go back in with E47 because we've got at least one more layer of that color that we can get out of it. And at this point, it might help to think of what we're doing is a bit more like painting since it's going to take a little bit more to delineate some of these forms. All right, so I'm going to continue using E49 Dark Bark. And I'm going to um, use it a bit as like I was inking just to sort of help delineate some of these forms. Inking, or I guess watercolor. Doing lineless Copic work is really very similar to watercolor in my opinion. It takes a steadier hand than I sometimes have. So, with a steady hand, and hopefully not on the spirals, I'm going to ink her eyelashes. And if you're more comfortable, you could use a fine liner. But sort of the point of doing the lineless style is to avoid having anything but color. I messed up her eye a little bit, so I'm trying to fix it. I'm not super happy with how her mouth is looking, so I'm actually going to go back in and just help delineate it a bit. There we go. All right, so since I sketched in her shirt with a light pink, I'm just going to grab a couple of light pinks. Start with R triple zero and work my way around the flowers. All right. And then I'm going to work in this slightly darker pink. And this is R30. And blend that out a little bit, or at least soften that transition. And I'm actually going to sort of line it with that pink. All right, so next, I think I'm actually going to take that same super light pink and just go around the outside of some of the daisies a little bit just to sort of ground the image like we talked about in the succulent tutorial. I have a cat whisker on the page. Although I think anybody who knows me is not surprised to hear that. And the goal isn't really to color the daisies. It's more just to sort of place them on the page at this stage. All right. I'm going to let that dry and I'll be right back. Now that the ink has had a chance to dry, we're gonna start with BG00. And that's one of the two colors we used in her eyes. And we're gonna go ahead and fill all those petals. And then after, we're gonna go immediately in with, I believe it's B01. Yep, B01. While this is still wet, and we're just going to sort of flick the brush nib like this and then blend it out again with BG000. And I'm going to do that for all of the flowers 
And since there's quite a few of them, I'm just going to go ahead and do that on camera. Now that, I mean, off camera, now that you guys have the gist. All right, took some doing, but I got all of the daisies, at least the centers of the daisies colored in. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of blue violet and just sort of frame her hair and her face, especially where the purple is. That'll sort of make that make a little more visual sense, I hope. And then I'm gonna grab a colorless blender. It doesn't really matter which brand. So this is a Max B1 that I have laying around, needing use. And I'll just blend that out a little bit. And do that on her blouse, as well as where her hair sort of hits a corner. And here, sort of in the vertices of the daisy petals. All right, so what's really left is to do the center of the daisies. So I'm going to use this custom filled color. It's uh, a Copic filled with Ranger and Sunshine Yellow. I mean, filled with Sunshine Yellow Ranger ink. I'll just go ahead and let me actually grab a much lighter yellow because it's darker than I thought. So I'll fill it in and then push it back again using that lighter yellow. And sometimes when I apply like colorless blender or a blending color, like a lighter version of the color, it's a, it reminds me a bit about of using like magic color changing markers when I was a kid. Just sort of the time it takes for the ink to do what it's gonna do. And some colors really shift dramatically, like some of the hot pinks really shift a lot in color when you add colorless blender to them, which makes blending them a bit of a pain. Then go into them again with that same color. Add a little bit of shade. And then finally, I'm going to use Y26 in Copic, just to add a little bit more shade while it's still wet. And I'm gonna use B01 to sort of add a little more definition to the daisies, not too much. Right, and then I just need to grab a white signal. Oh wait, let me actually outline her shirt a little bit better. And you don't have to do all this. It's not necessary for lineless marker illustration. Just thought it would help with this, since I'm using a lot of very muted colors. All right, so onto that sig now. Just going to use that to add a little bit of highlight to her eyes. And her eyelashes. To her lips her nose, to her hair, add a little bit of it back to some of the daisies, not really a whole lot. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on using colored leads with alcohol markers and skipping your inks. If you did enjoy this video, if you found it helpful, useful, or inspiring, don't forget to leave a like. If you've got any questions, just let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing. I 
post this sort of content twice a week. And if you enjoy alcohol marker tutorials and content, make sure you head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com. I've reviewed dozens of brands of markers and have written several marker tutorials that you guys might find useful. If you really enjoy content like this and you want to help make it possible, head on over to patreon.com slash natosoup. And if you like my art and want more of it, you can either follow me on Instagram, which is instagram.com slash natosoup, or, and or, you can read my comic, 7-Inch Kara, at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I see you again really soon, and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye!